Hola, it's Harley from Hokopama, Ecuador again. Um, if you watched the video that I posted yesterday, uh, we did a preparation of San Pedro. Um, actually, we're going to uh, drink that particular concoction tomorrow. I've intentionally made it much more potent than I have in the past. Um, I'm going to try and see how far we can take San Pedro, so I'll probably post a um, trip report video. We, I don't know that we'll video during the uh, ceremony, perhaps, but at least um, we'll do a report video afterwards. Today we're going to talk about the medicine of Yopo, also known as cojoba, uh, pina. Um, it's a snuff made from a tree called Adanthera paragina, uh, also known as Tahuilco. In fact, in Vilcabamba, where we live in Ecuador, um, the legend is that uh, shamans from all over South America would come because there were so many Huilco trees to collect the seeds to make the visionary snuff. And so, um, ah, speaking of, we want to get a little bit of this. Um, the first part of the process, heating the seeds, I wasn't sure how long it was going to take, so we went ahead and started that up. Um, and I'm just trying to show you guys what to look for. I just heard one pop. So when you collect the seeds at first, they're going to look like this. And then you're going to place them in a pan and heat them until they explode. Hopefully another one will go. There we go, that little pop that we just heard. Sometimes they'll fly way up off the... Uh, out of the pan, all the way even like Mexican jumping beans. Another one you can see it's kind of puffed up a little bit. Hopefully it'll explode and we can get that on camera. There you go. Okay, so there you go. There's a good one. All right. Um, so, uh, that's the first part of the process, but let's talk a little bit more about the, um, the plant and its chemical constituents and its potential shamanic uses <laughs> while those seeds back there are exploding. Um, the seed itself contains a whole list of different psychoactive tryptamines and uh, know, saponin, I think, but the main constituent is bufotenin, which is of course the same, um, same compound that's found in the toad. 5-MeO-DMT uh, and indian dimethyltryptamine and in the wild the uh, seeds and other parts of the plant will contain extremely varied quantities of these different chemicals. So the effects of Yopo can be very different. Sometimes it will be, usually it's a bufotenin dominant experience, um, but sometimes they're, uh, I think these seeds actually have quite a bit of indian dimethyltryptamine. It's supposedly very rare that the seeds contain more nm dimethyltryptamine than the other tryptamine constituents. But um, in the case of this particular batch of seeds that we collected here in Vilcabamba, um, I think they're very high in nm dimethyltryptamine. Okay, so the snuff itself, um, you uh, basically are going to, um, and I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll go through this process a little bit more, but uh, you need some kind of uh, activator, um, just like you do with coca leaves, in order to make the DMT uh, active when it's insufflated or snorted. The traditional way is to pack the cojoba snuff in a foot-long pipe, and um, let's see, similar to, I think we have a smaller one, right? Yeah, this is a rape pipe made from bamboo, so if you just imagine this, it goes in the mouth, in the nose, you blow to administer rape, so with yopo, it's the same thing, only it's much longer. So you have a accomplice below the uh, mixture of heated snail shell. Sometimes they would put some tobacco as well, depending on the tribe. Um, the onset of the effect is maybe a few minutes, maybe five minutes. It peaks maybe in eight to ten minutes. Uh, it's about an hour long. It's sort of similar to ayahuasca. Um, of course, the uh, guiding female spirit, the Pachamama element, at least for me, has not been present. Um, the visions are extremely colorful, extremely clear. It is one of the strangest and most beautiful things that you can possibly experience. And it really did surprise me that this dramatic and amazing effect could come from just a few. I think the first time I used four seeds. These days I use five or six. Um, but yeah, very small quantity of the seed uh, insufflated produces.
which is a, an extraordinary effect. It's a little bit different every time. Um, and, you know, for me, it hasn't been a matter of using this medicine to heal trauma or um, it seems that, you know, it's just general communication with um, entelechies of another dimension is the purpose of the Cahoba stuff. So, the process. After you have heated the seeds until the skin pops, let's see if we can get one where hopefully they're not too hot. They are pretty hot. But you basically just need to tear the outer skin and peel it away. And then when you get this woody part in the middle, all of the red off because there is no reason to inhale that. Um, we'll place it in a mortar and pestle with uh, traditionally what's used are these giant snails. You can see that in there. So the snail shell is heated in a wood fire. Uh, you can wrap it in um, aluminum foil and uh, heated for I would say probably about an hour. Um, pretty close to the flame, you gotta get really hot. And you crush it up into a powder after it has been thoroughly cooked. And you'll know that it's cooked. It becomes really thin, fragile. Um, people say that it's best to add a little baking soda, which is definitely not traditional. Um, but I do that just in case there's a reason. If you use baking soda alone, if you don't have access to um, seashells or the giant snail, then um, it'll have a slightly weaker effect and you need a little bit more baking soda. But the ratio is roughly 20% by weight of either snail shell or baking soda or a combination of, I use maybe 10% baking soda and 20% uh, snail shell. And then we're going to grind this together and use a little bit of water to make a paste. And um, after that is allowed to dry overnight, you take the paste, which we're, we're going to make in just a moment here, and crush it up. And if you don't have, you know, a couple feet of bamboo to make a pipe, you can just insufflate it as you would any other drug that you're insufflating. So. Okay, so I like to grind the seeds first. And you want to grind them as thoroughly as possible because this stuff is going into your nasal cavity. Um, I should mention that it is possible to smoke it. I don't recommend that necessarily because the effects are not as dramatic and it apparently burns very hot as it's been compared to smoking lava. And um, people also take it, uh, it uh, boof it, you know, in your anus. And that is supposed to produce very little nausea and an extremely strong effect. But I like to stick with the traditional method and just insufflate through the nasal cavity. So once you have ground your cooked seeds to a pretty fine powder, we're going to add, um, this is about 20 seeds, I'm making a few doses. Something I should mention is that I have read repeatedly that the finished um, snuff degrades very quickly in potency. So it's best, you can make the... Um, this, the base, the activator, and the shell powders separately and then combine it right before, the day before you're going to use it. So, um, I'm going to add some snail shell here. It's a little bit much. And a pinch of baking soda. You can weigh all this on a digital scale if you like, but I don't really feel it's necessary. Then we're going to grind it together again. So, pretty uniform. There's no lumps. You definitely want that snail shell to be totally and completely destroyed because it's sharp and um, kind of unpleasant to get, you know, sharp pieces of snail shell in your nose. Okay, so now that we have this concoction, We'll add a tiny bit of water until we get paste. So let's do that. You want just enough water to make it kind of stick together. 
was looking for like a very wet clay type consistency and after you get it sufficiently moist you roll it all together and kind of knead it like dough until you have a pretty consistent you know you look at the color and make sure that the snail shell is mixed in well with the seeds and everything is well mixed and it's a good idea then to pat it out as flat as possible you're going to let this dry overnight grind it again and then you're going to end up with the finished powder which kind of looks like that okay so thanks a lot for watching and um, uh, I guess I should mention as well that uh, the decision to take Yopo should not be taken lightly. Um, if you do it indoors, you should have a bucket prepared because most people, I never do, but most people vomit. Um, and I'm not saying that it shouldn't be taken lightly because it's dangerous or um, there's some risk of insanity and nothing like that, but it will have a very dramatic effect on your worldview, particularly if you haven't ever had any experience with psychedelics, you may want to start with something more mild, um, because the Yopo is, uh, there's nothing that I could say that would really prepare you for the strangeness and the intensity of the experience. So something to be aware of that if you do decide to embark on this journey with this particular plant, especially if you don't have someone who is experienced with you. Um, I've read some pretty bad stories in the internet of people just being careless, and I, I should mention also that in no cases did anything dramatically, you know, bad happen, but people get themselves at least, you know, into moderate trouble, um, taking large doses without being prepared. So it is something to take seriously, but it's a very beautiful um, and enlightening medicine that's been in use for 4,000 years, and definitely recommend it if um, spiritual transformation or insight is something that you are genuinely seeking. Uh, you probably will derive some benefit from the OPPO. So hit the like button, subscribe, and um, tomorrow or the next day we'll have a video um, wherein we will talk about how LSD, psilocybin can be used as well. I prefer LSD for this kind of application because psilocybin tends to give me physical symptoms that are a bit of a distraction. But we're going to talk about how a combination of deep breathing and um, what happens neurobiologically with um, LSD and psilocybin in terms of um, reprogramming, deprogramming and reprogramming um, habits, um, any type of conditioning, uh, even you know, uh, brainwashing, um, how you can use simple breathing techniques in combination with moderate doses of these psychedelics to reverse habits. And this uh, technique is very, very simple and extremely effective. It, it blew my mind how um, effective it was at deprogramming the smoking habit, for example, and I'm sure it can be used effectively for, and I, I mean, it's not just me that is sure, there's a lot of research that's been done over the last couple of years where they have, you know, come up with numbers like, you know, 85% more success of breaking habits than without these substances. So um, it's going to be our next video, and then uh, the San Pedro that we made uh, yesterday, we're, we'll have a trip report up for that soon. So um, you can also check us out on Facebook, Illuminostic, I have a Facebook page where you can contact me. Um, so yeah, look forward to some more videos this week, and um, have safe and happy travels, all you neuronauts out there.